Hey, what's up, nerds? Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall, and today we're going to do a little bit of Q&A on Nurgle. These are questions that I took from the Facebook Maggotkin of Nurgle uh, group, so uh, I just wanted to go through. I picked out some questions, and I thought I would give my own answers, and hopefully it uh, helps some folks out there, maybe answers the questions of uh, the people that actually... Uh, had posed them as well. Up first, how many use Nurglings in your list? I'm thinking they have good potential to take objectives on turn one, which can make a difference in victory points. Points value come down to summoned. They kind of miss their most useful ability. So I think the actual most useful thing to do with Nurglings is get uh, your troops into enemy territory on turn one. Um, that said, typically you can do that through other means, um, either through having units just have that much movement to get into enemy territory or using gut rot spume to drop guys off in enemy territory. So I think in general, nerglings are not that strong and I wouldn't take them personally. Uh, as far as securing objectives, uh, they're not going to hold on to them for very long because Nurglings are really not that good on defense. So, it, unfortunately, Nurglings don't really have that much of a value in Age of Sigmar. Looking into a new army, I love some Rotbringers but hate slow armies. Are they as slow as they look? Any movement tricks? I know about Gut Rot, and he's awesome. You're right, Gut Rot is awesome. Um, in general, Nurgle has a surprising amount of movement. So, the Feculent Gnarl Maw gives you run and charge. Your Blight Kings are plus one to run and to charge. Your Great Unclean One with uh, Doomsday Bell gives plus three movement to all of the units within seven inches of him. There's... Uh, one of the stops on the cycle of contagion is plus two movement. Uh, one of your abilities uh, from uh, your hosts in Wrath of the Everchosen is to use at the double for free once per turn, so giving you that automatic run of six. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of movement tricks, and oh, and one of my favorites using Lord of Afflictions. Uh, and the Pusquoil Blight Lords together, and that combined with your free at the double every turn, uh, you can shoot those guys 22 inches across the board and then charge with them. So, yeah, Nurgle has a lot of movement tricks. It's a surprisingly mobile army, and people really get caught out by that quite a lot because they see the 4-inch base movement on... Blight Kings, and they think they're kind of not a threat until they're on their front doorstep. Hey, Puss Lords and Grandfathers Favored. Hey, I spent most of 2019 out of Age of Sigmar, and I'm wanting to get back into it. I don't want to go out and buy a whole new army, Nurgle for life. All right, rock on. But after looking at the new General's Handbook, has anyone had any luck with the new special rule. Apologies if this has been brought up a million times. So the new special rule that he is referring to, I believe, is uh, basically that you can't stack saves against mortal wounds. So um, like you can't have disgusting resilience and some other um, ward save type effect. I don't think this really impacts Nurgle as much as you might think it would. There's very few things where you would end up with stacking abilities. The The main thing that I can really think of would be a Harbinger of Decay plus Pusquail Blight Lords. They could get the double five up. But other than that, I don't think that special rule really affects us that much. So it's... Um, yeah, it's really not a big deal. I think we are just fine. And with the other changes in the General's Handbook, I think right now Nurgle is looking better than it has in a very long time. All right, here is a long one. Question on competitive Nurgle, but some context first. All right, 
I like context. Played a lot of Maggot Cannon in 2019, tried all models and lists of the time. It got around 5,000 points of them for 40k reasons too, and they were horrible competitively. They could not get a top 10 in a decent event outside of some gimmicky combos with Slaves of Darkness and Pestilence that were short-lived and nerfed. So I just stick to using them when I didn't care about winning and wanted to make other players happy with his army. You did it, chap. You beat the green evil demons. You're a great player. Since January, I switched to Zinch and obliterated most things on tabletop simulator during coronavirus. Got nostalgic about playing Nurgle, so how are they faring competitively nowadays? I already searched the group for competitive and competitively tournament outside some silly flexes. I don't find any real results or list building. Are they still stupidly bad, or did all of the point reductions help a bit? Saw some people calling them B-tier instead of shit-tier, so that's a step forward. But uh, what about the new General's Handbook in them? Uh, and then he has pictures of his uh, army. So basically the question here is, uh, how are Nurgle faring competitively? And at the moment, it's really kind of hard to tell because most games getting played are tabletop simulator and that metagame is different than the metagame in reality because you don't actually have to own and paint the models. So, I think broadly speaking, Nurgle is in a pretty good place competitively. I don't know where to put them in a quote-unquote tier system. I think they have a lot of strong attributes against the strong shooting and magic meta that's going on right now. You can put a lot of wounds on the table that are very resilient, uh, and you can heal, and you can summon, and you can save mortal wounds. So, it, there's a lot of things out there that I think really give you a leg up on the metagame against the more prominent armies of the moment and I think with the points reductions as well as the addition of the hosts and the FAQ that we got over the winter on our Blight Kings I think we're in a good place right now so um, I, I think we can hang with the fat middle of armies and we have a pretty decent matchup better than average against the stronger armies so I think you're probably, once uh, you know all of these lockdowns get lifted and we start getting back to tournaments, I think you're going to see a lot more Nurgle near the top ends of events uh, if competitive players are bringing it. That's always kind of the question, is part of the results of tournaments is based on the skill of the players bringing that army. So if the strong players also decide to bring out their Nurgle, I think we're going to see a lot of 4-1s and 5-0s at tournaments. Um, well, maybe not a lot of 5-0s, but certainly a 5-0 as a possibility and a decent amount of 4-1s. All right. Has anyone had any success with a pair of Plague Claw Catapults? Listen, I'm sure somebody has, but it certainly is not me. Um... I've done the math on them. They are just not that good. They need to be costed much lower than they actually are. They don't address problems that Nurgle needs answered. Um, particularly, this would be way better if they got bonuses against heroes or monsters, something along those lines. But here you really get uh, bonuses with the Plague Claws against horde units, which is something that you can usually chew through pretty easily with Nurgle, so I'm not really that concerned about it. So I don't think Plague Clop catapults are really going to be the answer for us. Alright, normally I play some form of a Blight Cyst. What can I do against Zinch Demons? Normally they surround a bunch of of flamers and exalted on an objective with pink horrors that I am unable to chew through very quickly while the flamers nuke around 10 blight kings per turn. 
This is a tough one. Um, I'm beginning to question whether or not Blightsist is actually the right answer in the current meta. And uh, we'll talk about this more on you know some future questions because this comes up again. Um, Blightsist is doing you no good against Zinch because they all have paper thin saves to begin with. What you really need is throwing more heavy artillery into the pink horrors. You just need to get those horrors down as quickly as possible. As I said, the blight cyst isn't helping you there. So, um, a Lord of Afflictions giving you rerolling ones um, to hit might be an option to get you a little bit more damage. He also has some other utility. Um, also, some Puscoil Blight Lords in conjunction with the Lord of Afflictions could jump over that line of horrors and get into the flamers, which might be a good option for you as well. So that's definitely something to look into there. I think uh, for situations like this, I think Puscoils have a lot more utility than people give them credit for. And uh, I, I think they're really good. Definitely something to try out. So if you happen to have them in your collection, definitely give that a spin against Zinch and see how that does. Oh, this one's a little difficult to read. Can anyone help with Nurgle tactics? Also, is the Glotkin worth buying if I am running Marauders? So Nurgle tactics in general, um, uh, that's too long of an answer for this particular Q&A. Um, so I'll say, I have lots of videos on my channel that you can go look at about tactics, um, and you should go watch some of those. I will also have more upcoming. Um, but the main question that I like here is, is the Glockhan worth buying if I'm running Marauders? Chaos Marauders are your number one absorber of Glotkin buffs. Oh, Maybe not necessarily number one, but they're certainly in that top tier of units that love to get buffed by Glotkin. They're definitely really strong. Strong value. A+. Plus, definitely do this. If you're running a Marauder heavy list, Glotkin is great. Glotkin is also great if you're running Slaves to Darkness with a, mortal, with a Marauder heavy list. And you ally him in, mark them all Nurgle, and give them extra attacks. Pretty sweet in general. Umbral Spell Portal. Worth it with just one Guo. I would personally go with no, and also caveat, I'm not sure what number of great unclean ones you would take uh, an Umbral Spell Portal with. So... I know that's pretty common to do with the um, Thricefold Befoulement, um, although the the Umbral sp Spell Portal is 70 points, so I would think that it would probably be of greater value to fill that in with more units, uh, because the Thricefold leaves you pretty thin. Um, with just one Great Unclean one, you're probably going to want him up further in the battlefield and uh, buffing your troops that are out there. So uh, I'm going to go with no for Umbral Spell Portal in general in Nurgle. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, maybe there's some uses, but at 170 points, I feel like you're usually pretty tight, and that's going to be one that is going to be a challenge, particularly since... You know, the Great Unclean one with Bioblade is the only way to buff casting. So, um, it's going to be hard to reliably get the Umbral Spell Portal on the field to begin with. Alright, I was putting together a Nurgle Rotbringer list and thought about having Lord of Blights and Lord of Plagues plus both of their battalions. Anyone think this is worth the points investing in both of them and the battalions? So, I would not run both of these. I would pick one and go with it. I have played with both 
I think both have their strengths. Rerolling all of your hits with a whole bunch of Blight Kings in Plague Sist is really, really strong. Getting all of that rend out of Blight Sist is really strong. So I think it's basically a, a metagame question as to how much armor you think you're going to have to bust through and if you think the rerolls will therefore be more effective than uh, the rend. In the plague cyst, you also have to worry about keeping your Lord of Plague safe because his buffs radiate out from him rather than simply being a blanket buff to the whole force. So typically people lean more towards the blight cyst. Um, people like rend and it's a more reliable buff to get. You don't have to rely on keeping a hero alive and with your troops in order to get the buff. That said, I do like it. Um, and being able to just reroll ones to hit like the Lord of Plagues typically does on his own is not horrible. And he's a decent melee hero. So getting him in there, um, running a blight system having a lord of plagues in the list uh it's not something i would personally do but it isn't necessarily wrong um if you need more heroes for some reason uh he is a decent uh utility piece to throw in there all right two questions regarding summoning one can our summon units move and charge after being summoned in the hero phase <laughs> number one uh you do not summon units in the hero phase you summon them at the end of the movement phase so no they cannot be moved because it is at the end of the movement phase two it is not in the hero phase it's at the end of the movement phase however they can charge they're going to have a nine inch charge to make though so that's going to be a challenge Number two, what is our best unit option to summon? I summoned 20 Plague Bearers yesterday, but they evaporated really fast. Maybe a great unclean one. So, this is definitely a question that comes up a lot. Because Nurgle doesn't get to really do a lot of summoning. And after playing around with the army quite a bit... Uh, what I find I do most often is summon plague bearers in groups of five to basically be chaff or hold objectives. I occasionally will pull units of 10 or 20. That is more uncommon. Also, occasionally grab a unit of plague drones if I need more of an offensive push, uh, offensive addition to what's going on on the battlefield. That usually happens a bit later on in the game, though. A great unclean one takes a buttload of contagion points, and he's just not going to do that much on the battlefield once he shows up. So I really, although it's tempting, I really would not consider a great unclean one for summoning. Your best options in general are some number of plague bearers and your plague drones. You don't really need to worry about them evaporating. You kind of want them to evaporate quickly. You want to shove them in your opponent's way and be a speed bump or just hang out and guard an objective. Uh, unlike a lot of armies, because Nurgle summoning isn't that great, we have to sort of find the best possible use for our summoned units and just don't have the expectation that you're going to get the value out of summoning that you do with most other armies that have summon abilities. How good are Plague Monks with Furnace in Maggotkin? So, first of all, I think Plague Monks in general are pretty strong. Um, in combination with the Plague Furnace, that's an interesting question. Um, I don't know how much the Plague Furnace is actually worth its points in a Maggotkin army. What I would rather do with Plague Monks 
is get a Glotkin behind them, uh, giving them extra attacks that way. Um, so I think that will give you more value than the Furnace will. It'll affect all of your units instead of just the Plague Monks. Um, and I think Glotkin in general is going to be more durable than the furnace going to do more offensively than the furnace um overall it's ex more expensive but i think it's a better choice also the furnace can only buff one unit of plague monks per turn however if you're running glotkin and two units of plague monks you can buff both of them drones i played three games running taliban and munificent wanderers three units of three uh, yesterday. They soaked up a fair bit of damage, but didn't really cause any pain back. Are there any ways to make them more killy? So, this here is all about stacking their buffs. What you're going to want to do is get a Great Unclean One, or a Glotkin, to use their command ability to give them plus one attack across their profile. So because they have three different attacks, you're getting an extra three attacks per model when you're getting the plus one attack. So in a unit of three, the Great Unclean One or the Glotkin's command ability is going to give you plus nine attacks. You also get an extra plus one attack per melee weapon uh, for having a uh, Nurgle Demon Hero I believe within 7 inches might be 14 off the top of my head I think it's 7 um, so stacking those two together on a unit of 3 you get 18 extra attacks so that's going to make them way more killy for sure another great thing that you can do is bring in a Rotbringer Wizard into your army and give them uh, Blades of Putrefaction. So if you cast Blades of Putrefaction with all of those extra attacks, you're going to be doing a lot of mortal wounds out. So that can give you a lot of extra power and kick with these guys. So it's Blight Sis all the time, correct? Is there ever a good reason to take Plague Cyst ever against Nighthawk? So, I kind of already went through this. Um, Blight Cyst is generally the battalion that is most commonly used. Plague Cyst is also pretty good. It depends on the metagame. Um, Plague Cyst was way better when we could use the Blessed Sons Battalion in matched play. That got dropped out of the General's Handbook. And that made um, for a one-drop Nurgle list. That was pretty strong. Um... As far as battalions in general, um, Blight Cyst is probably the best one in the book. Um, Taliband of Nurgle uh, is also one that people sometimes take, but uh, I don't really see that doing that much for you other than being slightly more resilient and lowering your drops. Blight Cyst is the one that's really going to give you the extra hitting power. So, yeah, as you can see, the, the battalion question comes up a lot about Nurgle. Um, and it, it, nobody likes running Blight Cyst, I don't think. Uh, but it's currently sort of the thing that we're stuck with as being probably our best option. All right, are Blades of Putrefaction still Mortal Wounds on a 6+, plus, not Unmodified 6? Couldn't find anything in the FAQ, but want to be sure. Yes, that is correct. The Blight Kings and Pusquale Blight Lords and Lord of Plagues all got changed in an FAQ. However, they did not change Blades of Putrefaction, so if you give stuff plus 1 to hit, you are still getting Mortal Wounds on 5s. So that is a really sweet trick to pull with your Chaos Knights and a variety of other things. Chaos Marauders, um, I think Bestigore do that as well. Um, if you're running the uh, 
Pestilent Throng. So you definitely have some options. Blades of Putrefaction, still a fantastic spell, although it goes off on a 7, so that always hurts. It's kind of swingy. Is Fecula Flyblown worth the points? That is a very good question. And I, being the math guy, did the math on it. And the answer is Fecula Flyblown and the Worm Spat are worth almost exactly their points, uh, oddly enough. So Fecula Flyblown is almost exactly the same as a Rotbringer Sorcerer, who is 120 points. She also comes along with two Blight Kings. Their scroll is basically exactly the same as Blight Kings. If you add the 120 plus two out of five Blight Kings, it comes up to, I believe, 176 points, which rounds up to 180, which is the cost of that War Scroll. So, yes, she is worth those points almost exactly. Um... The question is, is that the thing you want? And it's also a unique hero, so you can't give her any artifacts or command traits, although I don't know if you want to. That is an option out there uh, that is taken away because she's unique. Otherwise, it's uh, maybe just a way to get your points to work better in certain lists. Um, but yes, good question, and the answer is uh, almost exactly spot on, yes. All right, I have a really big Beast of Chaos army and have just started a Nurgle armor army. Wondering if folks have tried the Pestilent Throng. What sort of lists have worked for folks? I get the feeling that beasts would actually be buffed better in Nurgle. So, there's a challenge that we have with Beasts of Chaos and the Pestilent Throng. So, they get the Nurgle keyword with the Pestilent Throng. However, they do not get Rotbringer, Mortal, or Demon. And most of your buffs are linked to those keywords. Um, there's a few buffs that they would still be able to get, but mostly you're going to be looking at, um, you know, you're not going to get the benefit from the Great Unclean One's command ability. You're not going to get the benefit from the Harbinger of Decay's command ability. Um, various other effects aren't going to do anything for them. So they're sort of operators on their own, and you would really need to get those synergies within Beasts of Chaos, within that battalion, along with a couple of other Nurgle pieces to buff them up. Um, you know, they get extra movement off of the Great Unclean One. They can absorb the buffs from the Glotkin and do so pretty well. Um, Blades of Putrefaction can still hit them. Um, the Cycle of Contagion also affects them. So there are a variety of buffs that they do still get. The challenge for me is I think they're, the, the other three Chaos Gods probably have some better options. Like I think Slanesh is definitely better than Nurgle um, if you're going with a Beast of Chaos army. Um... Corn, I have also played against, and that was absolutely brutal. Um, so, that said, this is also something I'm going to be looking into. This is going to be one of my videos in the relatively near future, uh, studying the Beast of Chaos book and seeing how the Pestilent Throng will work in a Nurgle list, how we can squeeze the most value out of that that we can. So stay tuned for that. There is definitely more on the way. All right. New Nurgle player here in the War Scroll Builder. I can choose between four hosts. Where do I find the rules for these? And do I have to use them like Slaves to Darkness does? You do not have to use them. They are optional. And they are in the Wrath of the Ever Chosen book. Um... 
that is um, a little bit of a challenge. You're basically buying a book for four pages. Maybe buy it in the app. I think it's like 25 in the app. Um, or, you know, there's other resources out there you might be able to get the information from. They are very strong, and I do recommend them, at least having access to them so you can think about those for options. Um, but no, they are not required. Also, there is a fifth one. Uh, Tamerkin's Horde is a fifth host um, that never really gets talked about that is available in the Forge World PDFs. And uh, as far as I know, there's nothing that says you can't still use that. So it's out there and available to you. Um, so that might be something to check out as a fifth host option. And that's it. So I went through uh, questions from the last month or so on Facebook. I might start making this like a monthly thing, um, going through and answering questions from Facebook. Hopefully you all enjoyed. If you have any more questions, feel free to drop them below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, if you'd care to throw us a couple bucks on Patreon, it all goes back to improve the channel. So thank you again for watching and I'll talk to you all later.